Hello, and today, Poe's excited over there. Um, I had my Doctor Who Jadoons arrive. Um, I still find this really sort of interesting the way this is all coming together because the game itself is an out. We don't yet have the game, and we're getting the miniatures for them. Uh, which is fine, I, I'm, I'm enjoying the miniatures immensely, but I don't remember many games that have been released quite like this where you've started to have your expansion packs, you know, sort of coming out without the base game. But that aside, uh, if you're a Doctor Who fan that paints miniatures, I cannot imagine why you haven't bought any of these. Uh, it's covering all the eras, from the first Doctor to the twelfth, it's going to have all sorts of different villains and heroes and companions. Uh, I can un the only thing I can understand is some of the companions, like when I reviewed the Twelfth Doctor's pack, some of the companions are a little less exciting uh, from that side of things, and only because, like Rose Tyler, who's in the Tenth Doctor one, and um, uh, and Martha, where. Uh, regular clothes essentially so um, they're not as exotic as some of the other characters that you you will get but for a completionist and that I mean the characters themselves are cool so I, I have no problem with them doing it. it's not a, it's not like that it's not a problem with them doing uh, you know the, the female or may male companions that are just regularly dressed it's just they're not quite as exciting as some of the others but that aside I still think it's cool they've done them and for a completionist sort of thing it's it's pretty awesome so they've been releasing stuff uh, all over the place. I think that's more to do with stuff getting approved. The actual process I don't think is as difficult as it is waiting on uh, some of the stars. I think something like the Jadoon is, is easier and quicker because it's a Jadoon. That probably just goes either to BBC or if there was someone else who had had a hand in creating the Jadoon if there was a separate copyright sort of thing. It probably has to go to both of them and they just look it over and say yeah i like it or no i want something changed and if they say it's cool uh then it probably gets pushed into production which is why we might have things like the jadoon the silence um some stuff like that sooner than maybe some of the other characters that might have taken a longer process or if people are off doing other things they might not have uh, paid attention to the uh the sculpts if they if they have to sign off on it I think things are different now with the way merchandising is done than maybe in the 70s and 80s. So this is my third uh, actual, I have to still review the 10th Doctor, but I thought I'd do these guys because I like the Jadoon. The Jadoon are a rhinoceros <laughs> sort of race, uh, which was sort of interesting the first time we see them, uh, which was with the 10th Doctor. And the initial outing, I, I wasn't completely in love with them but I quite like them now. Uh, I think that they're, they've got an interesting side of things. They're often used as villains, but in a way, they are not themselves villainous. If you break the law, their punishment is harsh and swift, but they are actually massively law-abiding, and when they would come to Earth, they will follow Earth laws. They, they are massively uh, sort of obedient when it comes to, to the letter of the law which makes them harsh when things are broken, but they, they themselves are very law-abiding. So they're not actually evil. They're not like Cybermen or Daleks, anything like that. The problem with them is that they are so harsh with how, how the legal system in their eyes can work. But also, that the, because they will follow mission parameters to the letter two, people can be hurt, you know, sort of connected to that, where they don't see a problem or something doesn't no longer becomes their concern. So they're an interesting villain like that in the fact that they are often thrust against the Doctor and things he has to achieve, but they themselves are not evil. So this was an interesting little pack. Uh, the, adult, the companion ones are quite are a bit bigger, the actual box. And one thing I like compared to the Fantasy Flight ones, uh, which needs to have a blowtorch that is powered by a supernova to be able to get into, these come wrapped in plastic in a nice little box. Now the other ones were nicely sort of contained but I can hear these moving around so don't let kids use these. These are, I mean it should be obvious but kids are kids and they will do all sorts of weird and wacky things that they think is a brilliant idea and they will, so the back their own throat features three pictures of the ones you're going to get 
and they're unpainted so these ones are painted and then a little bit of information on both the game which is time, time in the vortex I think is how it's actually into the time vortex I'm sorry so it's uh, join the doctor and his companions as the TARDIS plunges into the time vortex a swirling ocean of seething energy whose distant shores lie at the ends of space and time itself encounter and defeat Daleks Cybermen Weeping Angels and more in this tabletop miniature game dare you venture into the time vortex okay uh, to do in a single minded in their pursuit of the law these black armored rhinoceroid bipeds serve as a mercenary intergalactic police force affiliated to the Shadow Proclamation. Known for their strict adherence to the law and their brutish application of it, the Jadoon have been harshly but accurately described by the Doctor as logical but stupid. Jadoon carry scanners to identify their quarries, translator devices to communicate during their inquiries, and powerful energy weapons capable of incinerating their foes. Model supplied unpainted, paints and glue not included. Contents may vary from those shown. Okay, so, opening up the box. Let's see. Ooh, it's kind of tight. No, I'm not going to make a joke. I'm not going to make a joke. Okay, I don't actually need the box, so I'm going to kill the box. The doctor would have said, ham-fisted human. Lacking in elegance. So, like the other one, it comes in this pretty little... Time Lord kind of plastic case. Doesn't look like there's any sticky tape, so it should just slide out. Oh, it's a flap. Okay, so they are. Each one is in its own little cubby. And that's kind of cool. Uh, so I guess there is some protection there. Uh, they, they didn't leave their cubby at any point to land on each other, so they're not banging off each other chipping each other uh, so there's no damage like that and the base is plastic so it shouldn't have hurt the the metal figure within they come on um, very small bases which uh, is not very good for balance they tend to be you know very easy to knock them over but each one comes with a standard warlord games limited plastic base. Anyone who plays uh, Bolt Action will be very familiar with these. It's the same one, I think, that comes with the Bolt Action World War II figures. So you can then simply glue them with super glue down onto it. I guess the other good thing with that is, as it's going to be a game, this is going to give, except for large figures, every figure will have the same size base. I don't know if the other ones came with this actually. I'll have to look. Uh, looking at my 12th Doctor ones, there's no bases there. Now, I'm going to have to look in the 10th Doctor box because I'm actually now not sure uh, did I not glue them on there yet or did they not come with them? So I'll have to look. So we have three. So let's have a first look. Two with helmet on, and one without. Okay, so looking at the one without the helmet, the detail is quite good. Um, a little soft on his uh, the the pants. They've got these uh, flaps that come down. I think they're leather flaps. Uh, they're a little soft in a couple of areas there, but overall. The detail is quite good. Not terrible join lines, mold lines. There's not a, a whole bunch of that sort of stuff. The face is not bad at all. There's some teeth. They could be a little bit more defined, but they're not terrible by any stretch. Slight mold line on his arm, but that should be not too hard to remove. Good detail on the eye, like the eye shape is, is there. The back armour is excellent. 
and not yeah just not much cleanup little on the ears a little bit just a little bit of scratching off, off the excess on the ears but there's not much at all uh, his gun holster would have been awesome if it was hollow which it's not but that's a minor con complaint and it's not a deal breaker the first of the helmeted ones is with his pistol out and he's in a much more aggressive ready to take on anything and anyone and his detail also is excellent I mean it should be the same sort of quality as the first one but there's one bit of flash again the mold lines are not that bad little one I think on his helmet yeah there's a little one on his helmet but you've got to tilt it into the light to see it so it's pretty faint nice uh, detail on the helmet nice big panels to paint detail on his boots overall is good yeah I was going to say that, that they could do a little better but actually the boots are pretty good the gun the gun isn't bad at all but it does touch the main body and both those pieces sort of blend together there's no separation between the gun and the main body so if I was going to change anything if I would have done that I would have had the uh, gun slightly off from the body so that there was a bit more detail because that's really the only place where this falls down is the gun at the front's not bad but it just sort of touches straight into the body and it just sort of loses some of its definition because of that and the last one he has his scanning device again there's a tiny bit of excess metal flash there but that was easy to remove uh, his boots aren't bad his guns in the holster tiny bit of excess on the uh, fingers tiny bit on one of the, the leather bits there like to come down from the front but overall these are another quality pack I think these came to about 20 bucks for me for three figures uh, with shipping so that's not too bad yeah I like them um, I haven't decided on colors yet they are pictured as black with some red but I'm thinking of maybe doing red and some purple just to be different so there you go uh, I think these are quite good and if you're a Doctor Who fan I don't know why you haven't got them yet uh, I hope this this line does really good there's so many cool characters and so many cool companions and just people that they, they they met during the the seasons that it'll, it'll be cool to see so many of them made uh, at once they've sort of done the base companion sort of packs that they can then start to branch out into into some of the the, the other more uh, I don't want to say obscure characters but just some of the, the ones that are a bit more you know different and, uh, I like the Queen I like the Queen of England in the floating uh, country state that sort of thing the, the sci-fi city I thought she was really interesting something with her would be cool uh, I think she had a helmet as well so you could have a helmeted figure and then the uh, exposed head so there you go the Jadoon I can look no I don't see yes hello